James H. Meredith is formally enrolled at the University of Mississippi, ending one chapter in the federal government's efforts to desegregate the university. The town of Oxford is an armed camp, following riots that accompany the registration of the first Negro in the university's 118-year history. Much of this film record was destroyed when our cameraman, Gordon Yoder, was attacked, but he did salvage pictures of Governor Ross Barnett at the scene. The governor fought the court order long and bitterly before modifying his stand, saying Mississippi was overpowered by the federal government. <laughs> President Kennedy appealed to the students and to the people of the state to comply peacefully with the law and bring the crisis to an end. Even as he talked, riots were breaking out in Oxford. In April 1963, Martin Luther King Jr. headed to Birmingham, Alabama to join in an anti-segregation march. By now, he was a national figure, often called in to lend his influence in local freedom struggles. The city of Birmingham had plenty of moderate white citizens, but they were used to keeping quiet. Many feared the violence of the Ku Klux Klan. The Klan had helped elect a white racist named Eugene Bull Connor as Birmingham's police chief. To put a stop to civil rights demonstrations, Connor sent attack dogs. All you got to do is tell them you're going to bring the dogs. Look at them run. I want to see the dogs work. Martin Luther King was tired as he arrived in Birmingham, but there was a feeling of excitement in the air as if a breakthrough were about to happen. Then, Bull Connor's police moved in to arrest Dr. King. He knelt beside one of the police motorcycles and said a prayer. Then he was taken off to jail. There he wrote a passionate and angry letter to explain the reasons behind the civil rights movement. He didn't have any writing paper, so he wrote on the margins of a newspaper and on toilet paper. Your first name becomes nigger. Your middle name becomes boy, however old you are. Then you will understand why we find it difficult to wait. King's letter from a Birmingham jail was an indictment of American society for permitting racism to continue. But it ended with hope. We will reach the goal of freedom in Birmingham and all over the nation because the goal of America is freedom. He we talked about freedom now. as the American ideal and then turned around and said, well, now blacks want to be part of that. He was asking white Americans, in a sense, to finally, after hundreds of years, confront this contradiction. They believed in freedom, and yet they denied freedom to African Americans. Which was their true self? In a sense, asking white America, are you Bull Connor, or are you someone who believes in human rights? Forcing people to make a choice in a non-threatening manner. On Friday, May 3rd, a new march took place in Birmingham. This time it included more than a thousand students and young people. One of them was Patricia King. President Johnson addresses a joint session of Congress to push a voting rights bill aimed at ending discrimination. It would appoint federal voting registrars in some instances and put an end to complicated literacy tests and other hampering tactics. The president referred to the events in Selma as an American tragedy. And throughout the nation, even in Canada, there were marches through the streets of towns and cities. In New York's Harlem, more than 15,000, half of them white, filed somberly through the streets in quiet but agonized protest. The events in Selma had been brought to a climax by a nighttime attack on a white Boston minister by white men. He died two days later. Many feeling he suffered martyrdom in the cause of civil rights and voting discrimination. The next day, four men were held for his murder. For the Reverend James J. Reeb, the demonstrators write his epitaph with this tribute.
Selma sprang overnight from an obscure southern town to the front pages of world newspapers. This church was headquarters in the Negro Drive for the right to vote. And it was here that Martin Luther King came to lend his support to the campaign. He pointed out that from Selma's 14,000 Negroes, only a few more than 300 had been registered at the polls. When one group set out to march to the Capitol at Montgomery, the procession was broken up violently by state troopers and sheriff's deputies. Then Dr. King led another contingent through the town. This time there is no violence. The thousand Negroes and 400 white ministers and civil rights workers reach the end of the bridge where the cordon of troopers stand. They are ordered to turn back. Dr. King confers with the police as the marchers hold their ground. He requests that they be allowed to pray. There are a few minutes of mounting tension. Request to pray is granted, and they kneel in the streets. Informants say that Dr. King turned his marchers at the behest of the White House, an arrangement that had been made in advance to avoid a confrontation that could only end in bloodshed. The troops and deputies stand stolidly by as the prayers are said, and the marchers go back to Selma. This Alabama town will go down in the history books as a turning point in the civil rights drive. From the halls of Congress to the smallest crossroads hamlet, people can understand the plea that no American can have freedom and justice unless there is freedom and justice for all. In Selma, there is a lesson to be learned. President Johnson sends to Congress a bill to reinforce the right to vote. With Attorney General Nicholas Katzenbach, the President signs an accompanying letter to the legislators urging swift passage for the bill that would outlaw discriminatory practices. Then the Attorney General briefs the press on the salient features of the bill. It would give his office the power to appoint federal registrars in six southern states where literacy and other voter qualification tests are required. You can never whip these boys if you don't keep you and them separate. I found that out in Birmingham. You've got to keep the white and the black separate. Bill's aim is held peacefully with police blessing and under permit. 